and Brad, the two most famous physical therapists on the internet. Hi, folks. I'm Bob Sharp, physical therapist. Brad Heineck, physical therapist. We are the most famous physical therapists on the internet. And in our opinion, of course, Bob. Today, Brad, we're going to talk about hip pain and hip arthritis. Stop pain with simple exercises. Right. A lot of times, simple is better. You don't have to get too complex with this, and sometimes you may avoid surgery even if you do some of these exercises. Exactly. If you've got nothing to lose, uh, I want to talk about this a little bit, Bob, and this is something a lot of our peep, our patients as well as peep, our viewers, I'm sure, experience this with hip or knee pain particularly. They go in, they get x-rays, and the doctor looks at it and says, my goodness, you've got arthritis in your joints. As a matter of fact, you've got arthritis on both hips, and it looks like your right hip's a lot worse than your left. And then the patient will say, well, but my left hip hurts, hurts more than my right hip. You hear this all the time. Yeah. It, it could be hips or knees. Right. I see that all the time. They'll say, in fact, they'll go in for knee replacement surgery and they'll say, well, actually, it looks like the other one's worse. But they end up doing the one that hurts the most. Right. Generally. I, I get people asking, well, what should I do? And so then it all boils down to this adage in the medical community, do you treat the x-rays or treat the patient? Because the patients say, I want the painful knee right. operated on. The x-rays might say, oh, this looks worse. Uh, in therapy, we don't have this issue. We always go after the painful the pain. side. Absolutely. Um, and quite often, sometimes when you take the pain away from one side, it maybe even improves a little bit on the other side because you're not limping so much. Right. So your, your, your mechanics or your gait mechanics improve. It makes everything better. By the way, if you're new to our channel, oh, please yes. take a second to subscribe to us. We provide <laughs> videos how to stay healthy, fit, pain-free, and we upload every day. Also, you want to go and join us on our social media channels. Uh, or go to bobandbrad.com and go to the giveaway section. We're always giving something away. What are we giving away right now? We don't know because this is a future video. Oh, that's right. right. But there's going to be – just click on the there's giveaway something section. something cool. We yeah. give away mattresses and massages and stuff like that. You can also go to Bob and Brad doc, uh, Bob and Brad on Facebook. There you go. Pinned to the top of the page. Okay. So we already went through the scenario. We went through half of our video before the intro. Yeah, that's, that's right. okay. So we're going to talk about how do you treat it. Let's say your right hip is very painful, and particularly when you walk on it, very common with arthritis. Now, this is something a lot of people do not want to do, but just take some stress off the hip when yeah. you walk by using a cane. Yeah, absolutely. This is... I find with some people that, you know, because arthritis tends to flare up and it tends to calm down, a lot of times by using the cane, it tends to calm down faster. Because you're taking weight off, it's not irritated as much. Right. And so you can, and so we're not telling you that you're going to use it permanently. Right. And we're not even saying that you have to do it everywhere. If you don't feel like you want to do it in public, do, just do it in your home for right. a while. Limp instead. Yeah, limp instead, <laughs> which people think. They look better when they're they're limping than using a cane. Right. So if you got you know get a cane, you adjust it so it's about at wrist level and you're standing tall. If it's your right hip, you use it in your left hand. That's yeah. one thing that a lot of people uh, get confused and just walk normal. When the right leg gets forward, the cane goes down, taking weight off the painful hip. We have some videos on how to walk with a cane, how to adjust and walk with it. You can look at those. We want to do some a few more other options here. The other one is. A little pendulum exercise or a kind of traction on the hip. So you go to your stairway. We don't have a yeah, stairway here. This is a here. great way to start getting some movement in the hip. Yep. Without without hurting. Right. You know, so so my right side is the painful hip. So I'm going to go up with my left. You're going to have to you hang on to the handrail. In this case, I'm going to use a nabuya stick for balance because you you need something for balance for for most people. Now, I'm going to let this leg, the sore leg, completely relax, like all the muscles are jello, and I'm just going to gently swing it forward and backwards. And the reason you want that hip to relax is the weight of your leg through relaxed muscles is going to distract or pull the joint apart, part, the joint apart slightly so you don't have that bone on bone. And A little bit of traction. Right. You get a snowmobile fluid. If that's working out good, you may want to put a little weight on. You can use an ankle Wait, now I've had people just put their winter boots on up here in the north. Well, oh, you that's know, a good idea. You know, a boot usually weighs a pound or two at right. least. And you don't have to go out and buy anything. And then, you know, your leg, your hip doesn't know if you got a boot on or an ankle weight. And, you know, do the same thing. You're going to swing it for a minute or two. And uh, I find people have success with that. 
it's pretty much a temporary thing, but it, it reduces things. It's a good Safety way to treat first, it. Safety first, and it starts getting some movement in the hip, which you may not have had for a while because it's been sore. Right. So Now, Bob, let's go on to the next one. Along with pain in the hip, particularly with arthritis, usually there's a loss of range of motion. Right. It usually can concurs right you happen at, at the same time i should say and if you can regain that range of motion in the hip joint that can also make you feel better it's amazing to me that even if you regain a little bit of the motion a lot of times it knocks the pain down at the same time right. so it, it, it really pays to do these stretches so let's show them okay which uh, one do you want to well, do not you just you're gonna have to yeah. Oh, I'm going to get out of the way. Yeah. Okay. You know, this is nice. You can do this on laying in bed, and that's what yeah. we recommend. You, Wake up and... You and could do it on the floor, but then you got to get on the floor. It works just as good in bed. And, you know, simply lay like this, and then you're going to see how far you can bring your knee up and to your chest. Now, if you can bring this knee all the way up like this, and this one, you get about this far, and all of a sudden, oh, it hurts, or there's a, we call a hard infill, doesn't want to go any further... That's the knee you're or that's the hip you're going to want to work on. So I, I'm going to do it with the right hip. Let's say this one goes way up to here, and this one stops here and it's tight and it's a little painful. But if you stretch on it, hold and relax, and after about ten repetitions, you notice the hip is starting to go up farther, similar to the other leg. Then you're going to want to do that stretch, you know, at least once a day. But I'm going to suggest two or three times a day, assuming it doesn't get real sore from the stretch. The first couple times you stretch it. You may want to give it, a, you know, wait till the next day. And I wouldn't expect that it would react that fast. It may take it may take weeks or even months before you start to equal the other one again. Sure, right. I mean, that's a tough fibrous material that is holding the hip together uh, in the socket, holding the hip in the socket. So it's not always that easy to stretch. And so along with that one, you may want to check what we call the external rotation of the hip. And I'm going to go this way so you can see what I'm doing. So with this leg, I'm going to go over the top of the knee like this, and I'm going to let the knee drop this way. So you can see this, I can go this far, and the hip that has the pain may only go this far, as opposed to like this, like the other leg. So here, all we can do is gently push the knee and relax. Pressure on, pressure off. And if it feels good to keep the pressure on, you may use that option and hold it 15 to 30 seconds and not do it as many repetitions. And But don't one, one thing you don't want to do is, is you know, spend 20 minutes stretching your hip. 10 repetitions on and off or three times 30 to 60 or 30, 15 to 30 seconds is probably a good place and to start. And what's nice about that one, you actually can do that one seated too. And oh, right. Brad's going to actually show how to do hip flexion the other way too. You can actually just cross the knee. Uh, across the ankle over the opposite knee, and you can go ahead and just push down like yeah. this and give it a, a right. bit of a stretch. Uh, a lot of people tell me that I, a lot of patients that I have that hip have hip arthritis, they can't even get that leg up there. Yeah, I mean yeah. that's that's how tight it's become. Sure. So they might have to even start with the knee down like this, a little lower, yeah. and and press it down. But it, uh, but they they know right away what I'm talking about because they, like I said, they can maybe get the one up there, but the other one I can't even get that up there. Right. Yeah. Uh, so. It's a, a great stretch. You're going to show a hip flexor? Well, before I do go to that, I just oh. want to mention, if taking a warm shower or, you know, a hot oh, pad sure. helps, uh, one thing, because a hip has got a lot of muscle around it, depending on the individual, there may be other soft tissue kind of uh, padding that area. Sure. So you want to, one option that you could do is get a, a hot pad that goes in real deep. Right. And to do that, you're going to need an ultra, or a, <laughs> All infrared. Infrared, not ultraviolet. But here we put that there, and you know Bob is going to show how. Yeah, deep I'm going to show you. Yeah, this we always use a demonstration. So this is a Thermatex infrared pad, heating pad. Now normal heating pads only go skin deep. They're they're just they just barely penetrate the surface, a couple of millimeters. This is how far the Thermatex goes, 2.36 inches. So what you can see here, what a big difference that is. That can start to go into the joint itself. If, if I look at Mr. Skeleton here, Mr. Sam, um, if I'm going through here, you can see how that can start getting into the joint itself, where this one just is going to heat up the outer surface and really not do much of anything. So, right. And then you would do the, the uh, hot pack for, you know, 
So you can go up to 45 minutes with these and do the stretch afterwards. You're probably going to find the stretch goes much better That's after right. you warm it up. And, and it, you know, Brad and I just use this on a regular basis for our backs. We just put them in our chair and we, we lean against them. Thermatex has been really good to us. They, they have a really great discount for the people, our, our subscribers. Right. So we'll put a link below so you can check it out. So. Yeah. The next, now this is for people who are probably more mobile. They got hip pain um, and they got fairly good balance. Is you can go up to a stairwell or in this case a stool, but I'm going to st stretch my right hip. So I'm going to come up to here and I'm going to go like this. And what's going on is my hip is flexing. You see how my knee is coming towards my chest. So that's a lot of hip flexion and it drops in. You know, this has got to assume you have a, a good knee too. But it yeah. will stretch your knee if you need some working on that. You get two joints at once. The stairs work great for this, Brad. Because I've had even really quite elderly people able to do this one. Because they start off on the first step. Yep. You know, they start there. And a lot of times there's, there's two railings. Right. So they so got they, something yep, to they got on to hang on to. And I, I have found most people can do that. If they can climb stairs, they can usually do this stretch. Sure. Yep. As and, long as there's hand railing. Yep. So it's a fantastic stretch to do. Now, so I do mine way up like this. Of course, sure. I'm, I'm younger and I'm, but it really helps. I've got an SI joint problem. So, you know, this is not only just doing the hip, it could be, uh, you know, working other muscles. Well, what's nice well. is you're actually stretching the hip flexor on the opposite side. Right. So and you're actually getting two stretches in one here. You can see it better here. Yeah. We're getting this muscle and getting this Which joint. also helps hip pain. So yeah. you're well, actually getting a double bonus there here. You go. Great stretch to do. My mic's falling oh. off, Bob. I don't know if people could hear me. Oh, uh, well, that's all Sorry right. Sorry about that. Oh, Lonnie, Lonnie sits to hear us. Hand, oh, good. Good. We're good. So. All right. Well, Brad, remember, we can fix just about anything. Except for a broken heart. But we're working on that. Yeah, well, we'll, we'll figure it well, out we'll, someday. We'll, pers we'll persist. All right. There we Thanks go. Thanks for watching.